I would like you to open with me and if you do not bring a Bible you can look at the screen. If you don't know how to read just trust me. In 1st Chronicles chapter 11 verse 12, 13 and 14 says the following. This is list the mighty man of David. After him was Eliezer. He was son of Dodo. Don't call your children Dodo. The Ahuhite who was one of the three mighty men. He was with David. He was with David at Pershadamim. Now there was Philistines was gathered for battle and there was a piece of ground full of barley. So the people fled from the Philistines but they stationed themselves in the middle of that field, defended it and killed the Philistines. So the Lord brought about great victory. Just want to look at that verse 14 once again. They stationed themselves in the middle of that field, defended it and killed the Philistines and the Lord or so the Lord brought a great victory. It's interesting God didn't bring a victory where they were sitting in their house eating Cheetos and stretching their hands toward the field for God to come and show the miracle. They positioned themselves in the middle of the field. They defended it killed the enemy and the Bible says and the Lord brought a great victory. This shows us the way God moves about in the person's life. Before we look into this I want to speak to you on a message titled from deliverance to dominion. From deliverance to dominion. I would encourage you to take notes otherwise remember them mentally. Before we mention this verse I want to start off with mentioning we are praying today for deliverance. We're going to believe it today for healing and for God's breakthrough in people's lives. Christianity one of the thirds of Jesus' ministry was casting out of demons. A first apostolic church disciples were very heavily involved in delivering people from the power of curses and the power of demons. Today demons are responsible for many problems and casualties in people's lives. They are the hidden forces that people many times shadow boxing where they're hitting things in the air but they're not making progress because they're not fighting a real enemy. They are fighting symptoms of the enemy and therefore their success is not permanent. And our assignment as Christians is to go to the root of the problem, to pull the roots out and to equip people how to deal with the consequences of the power of the enemy that was living in their life. As Christians we can be demonized. We can come under influence of the enemy in the areas of our life where we open the door. People who go around saying that if you're a Christian you're automatically protected and you are automatically can never be under influence of the enemy, they are deceived. Apostle Paul calls Christians and says don't give place to the devil. If a Christian cannot give place to the devil, why did Apostle Paul warn us not to do something we're incapable of doing? The first exorcism Jesus did was in a synagogue. It wasn't in a witchcraft place. Most of the deliverance Jesus did was among people who worshipped one God and who served God every single Sabbath. And many Christians need today deliverance. But I want to focus on the, the first thought that I want to share with you is the small freedom. God gives us small freedom to help us achieve a complete victory. Many times when people come to church or they come to counseling, to a Christian counselor or they come to a pastor, they come to a home group leader and they have certain demonic attack and someone leads them to a prayer of repentance and renun renunciation. They confess certain sins, they confess their bitterness and unforgiveness and they receive freedom. Sometimes people don't receive complete freedom, they receive small freedom and they give up or they get discouraged saying, I'm not completely free or they wait for a next encounter, next revival, next prayer line, next great man of God to come into town for them to receive more or greater freedom and there is nothing wrong with that but we must understand many times God will give you small freedom just a little bit as a seed for you to work with it to achieve greater victory in your life. We see that all throughout the Bible when God in the beginning gives us a seed and he said in the seed is your fruit. 
that's why when you eat an apple at the end of the apple God doesn't miraculously drop another apple God drops within an apple a seed and he expects you to use the brains you have to take the seed and put it into the ground water it protect it and produce another tree and produce another apple if God did it with apples God does it with every area of our life the Bible says God gave Israel manna. You don't see God dropping manna in their tent. God dropped manna where they have to walk to that place, reach their hand and grab manna. God will many times give us things in the small portions that we need to incubate, that we need to work with and produce and it becomes more and more. People who receive something little and then they just wait for another meeting or another revival without working it through will find themselves chasing meetings and never being free. Never developing a lifestyle which can take something God gives and produces in something God promised. God will always give you two talents, five talents, one talent and he expects you not to hope for more talents but to work what you got and produce more. When Jesus did miracles to Pharisees and Pharisees seemed to be not enough for them and they always asked Jesus for more miracles and they asked Jesus to do these weather miracles like to turn the weather to, to switch things almost like magical and Jesus wouldn't play to their request. Jesus wouldn't give them what they asked. You know why? He says I already showed you enough miracles that you didn't take in to work with your faith with those miracles. He says you won't get any more he says i'll give you one more but i'll prove to you even that miracle that i'm going to give to you it won't work for you he says this will be the miracle of resurrection of the dead he said i will raise from the dead but he says i guarantee you ahead of the time because the little miracles i gave you they seem little to you you didn't take those miracles into building your faith you almost ignored that and says but i need the big one he says i will give you the big one but the big one won't help you People who don't know how to treasure the little freedom they receive and work with it. Even if they get a complete freedom, they'll lose it. They will always be, always be walking from one deliverance to another. Not from victory to victory, but from deliverance to deliverance. For those of you here today who didn't receive maybe, you feel like you didn't receive a complete freedom. You received prayer by someone. You went through the counseling. You went through the thing and you feel like there's still things in your life. Can I ask you a question? Are you working with what you got? Or are you just like Pharisees saying, Jesus, if you don't give me anything else, if you don't, if you, I just need the big one because this is nothing. I just need the big one. Work with what you receive and you will see that what you got will begin to turn into what God has promised. Can somebody say amen? amen. Number two, if salvation is received by faith, so is deliverance salvation is received by faith so is our deliverance so is our freedom many times I had an opportunity to meet with a wonderful person this week who gets delivered and everything is fine and then after some time those symptoms the, the nightmares and certain attacks of the enemy they come back and this wonderful person asked you know what do I go with it now I mean do, am I delivered or am I not delivered what's going on with me and this person genuinely goes through deliverance in our church gets free everything is fine and then a week or two weeks later seems like things just come back and as we were sitting I asked this person one question I said are you delivered and this person replied back said yes no I said okay so make up your mind and this person replied back said yes no he said well yes I am and then I'm not okay I asked him a second question are you saved he said yes I said am I expecting a no after that or just yes they said no I am saved I said how do you know you're saved I know I am saved do you feel saved this person replies back says not always I said do you act saved definitely not always so what makes you think you are saved you put an exclamation mark to the fact that you are saved this is a big deal this is heaven and earth this is heaven and hell issue and you are certain about it you don't always feel it 
you don't always even act it but you know that you are saved and yet deliverance is not as big as salvation you received it and because you don't feel it sometimes and because sometimes certain symptoms still come back you go back and forth believing whether you are free or not and I said what would happen if you would treat your salvation like you treat your deliverance would you be saved today the enemy will use that confusion inside of you and this person replies back so you mean to tell me after I get delivered I have to receive that I am delivered and from that point be walking with the mindset that I'm delivered I said do you mean to tell me after you give your life to Jesus you have to walk with that idea you are saved even though you make a mistake and this person replies back yeah I said yeah what if this person said question what if during the service and this person said this he says, especially when you scream fire I start shaking and baking I said what if after you repented you commit sin do you lose your salvation or do you repent and you go back from the position of your salvation I said this you have to mentally receive when you receive deliverance that you are delivered position yourself station yourself in your freedom that does not mean you will never be attacked and it doesn't even mean you won't manifest it just means when you manifest or when you fight or when nightmare comes in it comes to a free person and you fight it as a free person the bible says righteous man falls seven times and gets up same thing is with your freedom the scripture says let the redeemed of the Lord say so it doesn't say let them feel so it doesn't say let them wait so it doesn't say let them wait for six months it says that when you experience that freedom you receive an inner witness in your spirit whom the Son sets free is free indeed you will say what if I still get tempted what if a week later I still pick up that cigarette you drop that cigarette and you tell that cigarette listen I made a mistake I am still free and I stand my ground otherwise if you go yes and no uh, I don't feel free today why because during the night I had a nightmare I don't feel free today why because I get tempted I you know what I don't feel like worshiping today so it, it must be something demonic you'll be always on this demonic chase and you will not live by faith you will live by feelings and you are already trapped in the grip of the enemy as Christians everything God does in our life is through our faith we receive by that I've seen that firsthand in my family or in my marriage when my wife would have her attacks of nightmares and we received we started to pray together with her we went to prophet tb joshua numerous times the time that we went in there i remember you know and in a scone if you, if you watch scone or you listen to scone in a scone the only way you really get delivered is if you manifest that was kind of the idea it's not a hundred fully percent uh, that always happens like that and tb joshua explains that but there was this particular wave where where you have to manifest to be delivered so i even i felt that i was free but i was like lord jesus just double checking I'm just gonna go in there and I remember it like yesterday I was really hoping to manifest because I wanted everyone to see I'm free I knew I was free but I just want everyone else to see I'm free and so I'm not gonna lie to you I stood there I was like I'm trying to go in my mind to every painful memory every every sick thing I've maybe ever done and even pick things up and nothing I couldn't pick anything up and I'm just like come on come on and so TB Joshua comes in and I'm beginning to feel weaker like yes it's coming it's coming and then he just touches me and I fall pick it up I fall again and I was like come on Jesus do this I don't want to leave this you know be free and nothing happened then I was like okay if nothing happened to me definitely stuff will happen to my wife so I got ready I'm looking at my wife and same thing happens to her he prays for her and, and then he says on the top of that he says you're free I said she can't be free she didn't manifest so we meet with prophet T.B. Joshua and I tell prophet T.B. Joshua T.B. Joshua you have to pray for her again why she did not manifest he said he said it's fine and he placed his hand on her and says this you are free I said how could you just give that out freedom without her shaking baking on the floor that has to come first and don't get, get me wrong manifestations are important many times people deep on demons manifest and everything after that trip we go to Ukraine 
So I said, okay, one mighty man of God, maybe the demons are so deep, maybe he couldn't pull them out. We go to the mighty man of God in Ukraine. And I remember like yesterday, we meet with him and he prays. I asked him, could you pray for my wife and could you pray for me? He prays for me, nothing happened. He prays for my wife, nothing happened. And then he just says, you know, you're free in Jesus' name. And we came back home and I'm thinking, well, great. We are free. Next day, a nightmare happens again. Everything that was happening to my wife before this freedom just continued. And the first time the nightmare came back, we had an option. The option number one, ah, you're not free. All of this stuff, they were just words because you still have the attack. Option number two, you are free and you have to fight those nightmares as a free person. Well, we didn't have much option because if T.B. Joshua, John Chi, Bob Larson, Vladimir Munchan pray for you and you still got the attack, maybe you need to start believing that you are free because ain't nobody else coming. It's like, what if Jesus will? You're going to have to wait for a while to, for that to happen. And I remember we made a decision. It was a conscious decision. We joined hands and we said, I told Lana, I said, you are free. And right now everything that the enemy will throw in, he throws at a free person and let it bounce back off of you. And I'm not going to lie to you, within months, which turned to about six to seven months, the nightmares begin to subside. But it's not what subsided. It's the fact that mentally things shifted in her. She became like iron. Before she was a shaky flaky, oh, this is what I felt. But inside she started to get stiff. She started to get strong. She started to get persistent and like, like just metal inside of her consciousness. She's positioned herself. She stationed herself. And honestly, those nightmares stopped. But it's not what stopped. It's what happened inside of her spirit now because of that. And what happened inside of my spirit because of that. Otherwise, we go from prayer line to prayer line. Manifestation to manifestation. And we always, always still have the same problems. God wants you to receive your deliverance the way you receive your salvation. I am not saying that if you didn't get delivered, you walk around saying I'm delivered. But after you received prayer line, after you received the deliverance, after you received that word that was pronounced over you, be free in Jesus' name. There has to be a time in your life where you take that word and you believe it. And you stand on it. And from that position, you fight whatever comes your way that's why the bible says whom the son sets free is free indeed and then jesus says few verses later you will know the truth that you are free and that will set you free that means that jesus touching you is not enough sooner or later that has to go into your subconscious where you say the truth is not what i feel not what i experience in the, in the in the sleep not what i experience when a prayer is going on not what comes out of my mouth not how my body feels the truth is what god says and i believe that that makes you free can somebody say amen once we receive that we begin to walk in that freedom i remember when a young man from our church he went to the scone and he also received deliverance it was from a spirit of pornography that was plaguing his life for some time and after he received that freedom you know when you receive that especially when you had a crazy manifestation and you come out you kind of believe now you're free and let me just point something out uh, deliverance is not about manifestation it's about revelation it's about an inner revelation that you are free by god by the holy spirit he comes back and for a few months he was completely no longer even tempted by the by the sin of pornography but after some time he he fell back into that sin and i remember he reached out to me we went out to to get some coffee and with a broken you know broken face he looked at me and he says vlad i lost my freedom and i said that's one way of looking at it i said what if i give you another way to look at it he said how i said that you didn't lose your freedom you fell you are free who fell and said so what does that mean we're gonna pray a repentance prayer and you get back on your feet you didn't lose your freedom you stand on the ground and what I told him at the time was very risky because I didn't know what I, maybe I was telling him heresy but I was like I gotta help this guy out and next thing happened when we prayed and I assured him I said listen stand in the position you are free and even if it happens again God forbid fight it as a free person I think it still happened a few times and after that that demon was completely gone and never came back into his life 
where you position yourself in your freedom by faith the same way you receive salvation and for those of you who are like well I, I just can't do that you know when when I manifest or when some things happen I just feel that that those nightmares I can't just walk with that idea that I'm free well why don't you try the same thing with salvation if you don't feel saved just throw away your salvation then why don't you do the same thing with salvation one day you make a mistake just just walk around saying you know what? I guess I'm not saved I need to get saved again you don't do that with salvation you protect it why because you know it not because you feel it but because you know it it's based on the knowledge Jesus died there was a moment you received Jesus and that seals it and from that point on you fight with whatever comes your way from that point on you deal with the feelings that come your way from that point on you stand from that position same thing has to happen with your freedom amen and the last point is that the real goal of God is not our deliverance but our dominion. The real goal of God is not our deliverance but our dominion. When God created us in the beginning, He did not create us to be delivered. He created us to have dominion. And to have dominion requires you have to have an enemy. God made you in his image and in his likeness that means he has you have the same thing that God is made of you're not God but you are made in his image and his likeness what rules what reigns what goes through God's if I could use the God's veins what's part of God is a ruler God is a dominator God is God reigns and when he made a little minions called you and I he made us in a small shape and form just like himself people who are equipped wired anointed to rule eagles give birth to eagles lions give birth to lions zebras give birth to zebras when God made us he didn't make us out of the ground our bodies yes but our spirits he made us out of himself and the first assignment he gave to man is he says be fruitful and multiply subdue the earth and he says have dominion over everything on the earth God gave us in the beginning a dominion and to give us dominion he had to put a devil somewhere within our reach to have dominion for we've been here only for a few weeks but God already trusted us with an old soul serpent knowing we are vulnerable knowing we don't know a lot we can fall prey to the devil's tactics but God trusted us with the devil we got deceived we lost the dominion and then we needed deliverance Jesus comes back gives us deliverance and you would think God would learn the lesson don't trust the humans give them freedom don't give them power they don't know how to use it but Jesus comes back and he tells them I've seen Satan fall I give you authority I give you dominion again I'm gonna trust you again why because you're made in my image and likeness I know you've fallen I know you lost it I know you're still fresh in these disciples you're gonna abandon me but listen you were wired not for deliverance you were wired for dominion but I need to give you deliverance to get you back in the position of victory in the position of dominion that's why Apostle Paul says when we receive the gift of righteousness and abundance of grace we will do what reign in life not suffer through get through get by not just oh I just want to get free he says dominate reign in life your real calling is not to be free your real calling is to dominate but to dominate you do have to get free you do have to receive the revelation that you're free once you receive the deliverance and don't stay there trying to protect your freedom take another step into what you were originally created for not to just maintain freedom but to be a fighter to be a winner and to be a conqueror and when the devil comes your way don't be scared says I was created to crush you God trusted me with you he placed you specifically under my feet see many of us think a real paradise on earth is not to have the devil a real paradise on earth is to have a snake under your feet not on your shoulder not in your mind not in your wallet not between you and your husband under your feet you want real paradise God says Satan comes as a package why how will you exercise your dominion if you have no one to exercise that over? Do you know how you will do that? You will begin to exercise your dominion over your spouse and your children. When initially you were given the power 
to exercise it over the devil. Scripture says God has given the earth unto men. Ownership of earth belongs to God. Responsibility of earth belongs to you. Everything that happens on earth is not God's fault. It's due to the lack of mismanagement of our dominion. It started with Adam. It continues with us today. God wants to deliver you so you can get your dominion. Dominion is this. Philistines come to grab your field of barley. You don't run. You position yourself in your freedom. You defend it. You kill them. You kill the fear. You kill the depression. You kill the generational curses. You kill the suicidal tendencies. You kill the spirit of cancer. You kill the spirit of arthritis. You kill the curse of poverty. You nail that down and you say, yes, it's been going on generations after generations. Stops here. Because I position myself in the middle of my field. I know who I am. I know whose I am. I am part of David's army. My captain is the risen Jesus Christ. He is coming back on a white horse. But until he is coming, he gave me power and he gave me responsibility. And listen Philistines, I was anointed for this. I was waiting for you to show up. Why? Because I have this dominion. I have nowhere to use it over. And you're the one I'm going to use it on. And the Bible says, and the Lord gave them victory. Victory won't come by you saying, Lord, please. Victory will come when you receive your freedom. You position yourself and you begin to defend whatever the enemy attacks. You don't leave your ground and you destroy the enemy. And God says, bravo, awesome job. Now you're like me, real family. Because you reflect God the most. When you reflect his nature and his nature he never gets manipulated controlled bullied pushed around nothing satan tried to rise against him and god says not at my watch and god placed the same spirit inside of you use it against the devil so you don't have to use it against the humans use it against the devil so you don't have to use it against your loved ones and you will see a great victory in your life in my life in jesus name <laughs>